Hello, guys. We are going to be reading two books about two different versions of the Three Little Pigs: the regular version and the version about the wolf and um the wolf wolf side, which is a little different than the regular version. So we can compare both of the books in the end of the video and see and see how which one is better and which one is maybe is like if you change your opinions on the wolf. The story we're going to be reading first is the Three Little Pigs. If you already know this story, you can you can us, listen to us again as a refresher. The Three Little Pigs. There once were three little pigs. He decided to build himself a house. The first pig met a man with a bundle of straw. The pig asked for some straw and built his house from it. Soon, a wolf came along and knocked on the door, saying, "Little pig, little pig, let me come in." The pig answered, "Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin." So. That big bad wolf huffed and puffed until he blew the straw house down. The second pig met a man with a load of sticks. The pig decided to make his house out of sticks. Along came the wolf, knocking on the door and saying, "Little pig, little pig, let me come in." Oh no! But the second pig answered, "Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin." So the big bad wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the sick house down. That's him. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. He asked for some bricks and built a sturdy little house. <coughs> the wolf came knocking on his door, saying, "Little pig, little pig, let me come in." Knocked by the hair of my chinny chin chin, the wolf huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed some more, but he could not blow down that brick house. Him huffing and puffing. At last, he gave up all his huffing and puffing and said, "Dear pig, come with me to Farmer Smith's turnip field. I happen to know it is full of nice fat turnips." I will come for you at six o'clock tomorrow. All right, agreed the little pig. But he got up at five o'clock, went to Farmer Smith's, and gathered all the turnips he could carry. He was back home by six when the wolf arrived. The wolf was very angry to hear that he had been tricked, but he not but he did not show it. Instead, he said, "Friend pig, I know of an apple tree just up the hill. I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow." The little pig awoke at four o'clock and hurried off to pick his apples, hoping to return before the wolf came. But this time he had to climb a tree, and the wolf came along before he could climb down. Good morning, pig," said the wolf, licking his chops. "I'm pleased to find you here. Tell me, are the apples very good? Let me throw you one," answered the pig, and he threw it as far as he could. When the wolf ran to get it, the pig jumped down and trotted away home. There, he made himself a delicious apple pie. Tasty. I'm making a delicious apple pie. The next day, the wolf was back. Charming pig, won't you come to me with me to the fair? He asked. I'll be here for you at three o'clock. Why, I love fairs," said the pig. The pig slipped out early and went to the fair himself. He had a fine time there and bought a nice new barrel for his rainwater. Big barrel. On his way home with his new barrel, the little pig saw the wolf coming to meet him. The pig climbed inside the barrel to hide, and it rolled right down the hill. The sight of it frightened the wolf so much that he turned and ran. Later, the wolf came to the pig's house and told him of the strange sight. The little pig laughed and said that it had only been a barrel, and that he himself had been in it. <laughs> the wolf did not like being laughed at. He climbed up the roof and shouted down the chimney, "Little pig, little pig, I'm coming in!" At this, 
The little pig hung a big pot of water over the fire. When the wolf came down the chimney, he fell right into the boiling water, and that was the end of the big bad wolf. Yay! The end. So, this is our story, and we're going to read another story about the three little pigs and the wolf side. For our second book, we're going to read The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by Alexander Wolfe. He was the one who wrote this story. Except that in the end, before the, like, the wolf doesn't die in this story, but in this story, the wolf survives, but he gets a lot of bruises. And he goes to jail for all he, all he's done. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story, because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Wait, what? Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think that you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing hold. I ran out of sugar. Oh no! Ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to talk to, in some, to in someone else's house. So, I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huff, and I huff, and I snuff. And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole dawn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was just feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang on the bell of the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, Go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving, I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming. I huffed and I snuffed, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now, you know, food was spoiled if you leave it just out in the open. So, I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. 
This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, "Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in?" And you know what that rude little perker answered? "Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again." Talk about impolite! He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, "And your old granny can sit on a pin!" Oh no! Now I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to pour a cup of sugar didn't sound really exciting, so they jazzed up the story with all the huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it, the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. Okay. <laughs> the end. So this is the ending of this story. So now you can compare both of these stories: the true story of the three little pigs and the regular three little pig story. And and in the which and after reading this story, how did your expressions change about the wolf in this story? Tell me in the comments below. Okay. See you in another video, guys. Bye.